Hey, it's Jessica Namasa with WTF Health. I'm here at Webbit in Sofia, Bulgaria, and joining me right now, I have Plamen Petrov. He is the VP for Artificial Intelligence at Anthem. So, Plamen, it's good to have you here. Glad to be here. Thank you, Jessica. All right, so I want to pick your brain a little bit about artificial intelligence, particularly in a health insurance company, right. because I think that if most people hear that, you know, their data is being looked at and analyzed, and you know, big trends are being inferred out of mm -hmm. population, there's a little bit of like a ooh, is this mm -hmm. a Big Brother thing? So mm -hmm. dispel dispel some rumors. Talk to me about why this is not necessarily as nefarious of a thing that's happening. Sure. So uh, first of all. Uh, uh, using responsibly using data okay. is the core part of what we do. All right. So uh, we cannot take a risk, we cannot take a chance of inappropriately using data. Everything has to be uh, approved, acknowledged. Uh, it's a very regulated industry, mm -hmm. so we abide by the regulations uh, uh, that allow that, that tells in what conditions, in what situations, what part of data is appropriate to be used. Uh, so usually uh, data is used uh, to render care, to improve care, or to pay care, uh, and only data as needed. Okay. So you don't get access to all the data record, only specific people that are authorized and approved uh, regulatory to uh, see a certain record uh, for the benefit of the patient, of our member, uh, are allowed to get access to data. So it's not that bad. Okay, no, it's not that bad. No, and that's great. And I, I'm, I'm asking you a little bit, because too, I used to, I have a background in a health insurance company, uh -huh. and it's like, I know these things. Yes. And I know how, it's like, if there's anybody who's not going to take a risk, it's going to be the insurance company. Yes. So yes. I'm glad, though, that you explained it um, mm -hmm. and articulated it so well. Yeah. What are you looking at? I guess when you're, you're taking a look at the, the data that you guys have access to, mm -hmm. and when you look at it, oftentimes, um, in other endeavors, the pieces that are missing are the claims data. And so you have a real robust look at not mm -hmm. only what's happening from an outcomes perspective, mm -hmm. but really the entire patient journey, including the cost. So yeah. what, what kinds of things are you looking into at a population level to help sure. kind of bring down the cost of care or improve access, things like that? Absolutely. Um, so uh, really being able uh, to identify uh, or predict what kind of conditions may happen so that you can proactively help the member uh, address those three interventions okay. uh, it's really the exciting part of uh, what we do so uh, if you if you think about it uh, looking at your uh, clinical history uh, and knowing uh, people with your uh, potentially depending on what data you have but your uh, even genomics uh, 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 based on your social determinants of health what kind of uh, expectations uh, we have for you and being able to help you avoid some uh, uh, really severe conditions is, uh, is a great thing. That's what we're vying to, to achieve. Uh, so it's really designing interventions uh, to help people avoid going to the emergency room last minute uh, and getting into really dire conditions. How, how much of this is in play right now and how much of it is still being built? Uh, so I would say a lot of it is at play. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as you know, in the U.S., uh, there has been a significant shift from uh, a model of uh, pay for uh, fee for service mm -hmm. payment to value based care. So, value based care really means that uh, the physician is provided all the data that they need in order to manage the care, the outcomes, uh, as opposed to trying to piecemeal uh, right. uh, render care. So in order to do that, uh, we provide a lot of uh, capabilities, uh, a lot of uh, dashboards, a lot of analytics uh, to our value-based uh, providers. Uh, so they can always have a dashboard, they have a risk profile of uh, their members, they can always query and see, okay, what may happen so that uh, proactively uh, intervene and help their, their patients. And last question for you, I'm curious to know from your perspective, I mean, you're, you're VP over AI mm -hmm. and you know, obviously the thing that you need the most is data yeah. and that's also what we hear a lot of other startups talking about is access to data, access yeah. to data. So what's, what are your views, I mean, especially coming from the insurance company on open data policy? So uh, generally uh, data is uh, owned by uh, consumers, right, by patients, uh, and uh, they should have the authority to, uh, to authorize who can see the data for what purposes. Uh, we get uh, access to data uh, as provided by the patients to render care to them. Uh, so uh, 
we actually are very uh, big believers in uh, opening responsibly again data okay. uh, to make it available uh, to uh, to people to innovate and bring care. Uh, as an example, we de-identified. So, so first of all, you don't always need personally identifiable right. data right. to get some great outcomes. So uh, for at, le uh, at the population level. Uh, so we just uh, recently, a few months ago, uh, prepared a de-identified set. Uh, that is uh, validated, foolproof, uh, that we are making available to researchers uh, with appropriate uh, uh, approvals uh, from universities like, uh, like Harvard, like Duke, sure. uh, and we create challenges okay. where they can identify and detect uh, certain conditions. Uh, okay. So it's really trying to innovate through data. Through responsible, yes, the responsible use of data. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so the responsible use of data, that is our key takeaway here yes, from you, Plama. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by to join us. It's always interesting thank to you. hear um, what's going on in the inner workings of some of the, well, we really, it's one of the largest health insurance companies in the U.S. Yes, So it's, And absolutely. it's exciting to hear about that. Thank thanks you. So thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh -huh. I'm Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.